Will the Federal Reserve downgrade the outlook for the U.S. economy at tomorrow's Fed Open Market Committee meeting? And will the Bernanke Fed soon pump more money into the system? We put together a top-notch panel of Fed gurus. We have Vince Reinhardt, former director of monetary affairs at the Fed. We have Peter Navarro, CNBC contributor and business professor at the University of California, Irvine. We have Bob McTeer, CNBC contributor, former president of the Dallas Federal Reserve. Hello, gentlemen. Vince Reinhardt, you first. A, will the Fed turn dovish and change their statement and downgrade the economy? They have to. They have to truth up the statement. Uh, remember the word that Chairman Bernanke used the most in his testimony, moderate. Well, the outcomes aren't moderate. They got to acknowledge that. They should. All right. Peter Navarro, should the Fed change its statement and hint that some point in the future, they're going to start priming the pump and printing more money, Peter Navarro. You know how it works. Should they do this? Should they follow Vince Reinhardt? Well, Larry, Larry, I told you time and again here on this program that the Fed chairman is a professional liar. Every time they get on, it's the rosy scenario. Of course, Big Bernanke's got to downgrade now because two, three, four months ago, the data was already telling him that the economy was going down the tubes. So, yeah, he will downgrade. As far as what he's going to do tomorrow with the quantitative easing, we'll talk about that some more. But, boy, is that a bad idea. Bad idea. But Bob McTeer is reading your blog. You want the Fed to put more money in, don't you? You're worried that the money supply, I guess, M1 and M2 are growing too slowly. Do you want the Fed to turn tail tomorrow? <laughs> do you want them to follow Vince? Vince Reinhardt's advice? Yes, on Vince Reinhardt's advice, and yes, they need to pump more money in the system. They haven't been pumping much money in the system. They've pumped reserves in the system, and the banks are holding those as excess reserves. They need to speed up money growth. Now, see, see, Bob, Bob, let me jump in here, Larry, because this is crazy. Bob, we got historically low interest rates at the long end, historically low mortgage rates. We don't need quantitative easing, which is what it is. Japan tried this. We've got a borrower problem, not a lender problem. The quantitative easing assumes that we've got a lending problem and interest rates are too high. It's crazy. What we've know, got I now in the housing market is people who can't get loans, even though mortgage rates are historically low, and we've got in the business sector... Companies whatever that whatever can't happened get loans to Milton Friedman? Have we, That's the problem. Have we, not quite Have we forgotten easing. Milton Friedman? Have we really forgotten? Oh, don't Milton invoke Friedman his name here in the same sense right, as Ben Bernanke. Hang on. Let Bob, interest rates. Let Bob uh, please. Go ahead, Bob. Mil you were interest talking rates. about Milton Friedman, Nobel Prize winner, distinguished monetarist, the money supply. To Milton, to Milton Friedman, monetary policy means growth in the money supply, and the money supply has simply not been growing fast enough under these circumstances. It's not even been growing fast enough under normal circumstances, and these aren't normal. Banks are hoarding excess reserves, and we need to pump more money into the system. Well, they're hoarding excess reserves because we've got a lending problem. They'd love to give it away, but nobody wants the money. And invoking Milton Friedman, who was the anti-discretionary monetary policy king of all time, when you're trying to support Ben Bernanke, is just nuts. I mean, Bernanke is making there's Milton no con Friedman There's no contradiction in, in that at all. There is no contradiction in that at all. Of course there is. Milton Friedman, the whole linchpin of monetarism, I mean, you know this, Larry, was you do not use discretionary monetary policy. So for the Fed to buy discretion and go down this path of quantitative easing to try to fine-tune the economy, Milton Friedman wanted no part of that. Me, Absolutely well, we want no to remember a couple things. One is there are two sides to the Fed's balance sheet, and, and the way it increases reserves is buying assets. Over the last couple months, its balance sheet has shrunk. That's not what you want to do when the economic tur data turnouts are weaker than you've thought. The, the other thing saw. about Milton Friedman is he, he, with Anna Schwartz, correctly identified the Fed's reluctance to be accommodative in 20, 29, 30, 31 as a major propagating I force. I understand of that, but Vince Reinhardt, I got to weigh in on this. They have put nearly two trillion dollars that money that's or they have put that money in they stopped putting it in last march so that has flattened out but they have added almost two trillion dollars and to peter navarro's point you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink if the Larry, demand, they have not the, added two trillion dollars to the money second. supply I, I, I beg your pardon the fundamental fed's monetary base the balance sheet of the federal reserve they have added to that it's gone from about 800 billion to roughly two 
$2 trillion, okay? That's what they've added. So it's a little less than that. At one point, it was about $2.3, $2.4 trillion. What I'm asking, I think what Peter Navarro is asking, I'll start with Vince. Vince, that money is there. The banking system has more money than it knows what to do with. But because of regulatory problems, because of tax concerns, because of Obamacare concerns, businesses yes. aren't hiring, yes, yes, and they yes. don't want to create jobs, and they're not make, they're not adding, they have no loan demand, Vince Reinhardt. There's, the reason the money no supply, doubt. the reason right. M2 isn't growing is it's there's no loan demand. problem, exactly, right. not a lender problem. No doubt problem. this is a sluggish recovery. There are a lot of headwinds, and, and balance sheet restraint on the part of of banks and businesses is part of them, part of the problem. However, you got to ask the Fed, what have you done for us lately? And what have they done lately? They've let the balance sheet shrink some. They can at least stop that shrinkage. They could bring the balance sheet back to that high, high tide mark. That goes in the right direction. Do I think it'll have much effect? Probably not. But does it go in the right direction? For now, it see, see, does. The, 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 and for the, the Fed to be seen as inactive now is only going to uh, Stoke politicians' desires to do something else. See, no, wait a second, they wait a second. Oh, yeah, but, they on. tried this for Hang six on, years Peter. in Japan, didn't work. All right, wait, 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 wait. I don't know that Japan tried, but Bob McTier, I want to come back to you. If you're worried that tax rates are going up, if you're worried that health care mandates are going up, we're going to have a fellow small business owner come on later in the program, tell us why he won't hire. If you won't demand credit, if all these things have caused a stagnancy in the economy, what the heck is another 500 billion or trillion? It's like government spending, Bob McTeer. This is the monetarist view, the monetarist analog to Keynesian government spending. How much are you going to put in, Bob? Another trillion? Another two trillion? Larry. Another four trillion? Where does it stop? Stop, Bob McTeer. Larry, 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 I agree with you on all these other points. However, an expansion of monetary base is not the same as expansion of money. And if they push it out and it won't go out fast enough, push harder. That's all I need to do. Yeah. We're talking about monetary but, but, policy but Bob, here. We're not talking about all these other things. What's the outcome? What does that do? It doesn't drive interest rates any lower. It doesn't make money any more available. The bottom line here is you've got a borrower problem both on the corporate side and in the residential housing construction side. The, 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 the borrower side on the corporate side is people are seeing a slowing economy and they're not gonna, they don't want money. For small businesses, they can't get it because of credit constraints. And you've got, I'm here in California, you've got thousands and thousands of people who can't sell their homes uh, because of the way the mortgage market is. They can't refinance their homes despite historically low mortgage rates. And the Obama administration is directly to blame because they don't target credit loosening for the people who need it. Small businesses and homeowners under distress. Well, Instead, they want to throw the, all the, this the, money the on the grave of Milton Friedman. It's crazy. The, the solution of, of all Friedman. that is not no. to allow monetary policy to tighten by shrinking the balance sheet. Well, it but, won't tighten. That's the whole point. Quantitative so. easing yes, is will. not the same as tightening monetary yeah, see, policy. That's I the thought, fundamental flaw when here. You, when you talk about it, let's use M2 just for argument's sake. I thought M2 was predominantly created by the private sector decisions. That's a banking sector decision. How to use the reserves that have already been printed, Vince Reinhardt. I want to go to you on that because I think, I, I love Bob McTeer, but I think there's some misunderstandings about how money, if, if the banks won't do it, if the consumers are deleveraging and and as, uh, as Peter Navarro said, if you have these fiscal restraints on, they can pour all the money they want. It's a gigantic li liquidity trap, and they're going to create a lot of false hopes, Vince. A lot of false hopes. What do you think about that? False hopes. Let's focus on that. Oh, I don't think that. there's... Look, I agree, Larry, that if they increase reserves, what they'll probably mostly do is lower the money multiplier. That money, right. the reserves won't get used to, for fostering deposit creation. However, at the margin, maybe a little bit, it'll help. Well, and... The way they increase reserves is buying assets. They'll be buying treasuries, mortgage-backed securities, and that could put independent when? downward pressure right. on interest rates. Now we're getting, gotta, we're getting you, brass, yeah. brass, tax, brass tax. When? When will they do this, Vince? When are they going to start actually go out and buy treasuries and mortgage bonds? That is the I, old, not, not tomorrow, right? You're not talking about tomorrow. I'm not, they're not ready for it. The, they're they're going to open the door tomorrow. Is that the right? weakening of the economy. They're going to open the door tomorrow, Bob McTeer. Is that what you want? You want them to open the door, which has been closed. It shouldn't be necessary to open the door. I'm talking about normal, ordinary, open market purchases of government securities. I'm not talking about anything extraordinary. Helicopter money, right? See, More helicopter heli money. Helicopter yeah, money. Yeah, bring out the helicopter. Black, the problem, black the helicopters problem. hovering over major American cities, <laughs> dropping dollar bills on the population, right? Is that what you're White asking, Mr. McTeer? 
All right, Peter Why Navarro, I got a different model. On the way out. The, the problem, suppose, the problem. Peter Navarro, hang on, let me ask you this question. Sure. Suppose, suppose Washington completely changed and Washington lowered marginal tax rates on investors, on successful earners, and on businesses. Would not the demand for money then rise and the money supply would rise and would we not live happily ever after? In other words, aren't there limits to what monetary policy can do, Peter? Exactly, Larry. And there, there, there are basically four ways, basically, when we get this economy going. We know that one of them doesn't work, which is the increased uh, government spending. We know the second one doesn't work, which is the easy money uh, from helicopter Ben. The two things are left are trade reform and tax reform. Uh, tax reform is the only way to stimulate the most important part of the GDP equation, which is business investment. And trade reform is the only way to reverse our large trade deficits and stop those trade deficits from shaving growth points off. So the problem with all of this Larry, is that when Bernanke comes out tomorrow, the White House puts more false hope into this whole monetary policy thrust and delays the point at which we'll All have right. tax and regulatory so, reform. Let me ask, go around real quick, one word answer, yes or no. The black helicopter's door will be open tomorrow. <laughs> Vince Reinhardt, you first, yes or no? The, the door, uh, yes. The door is open. Bob McTeer, yes Slide or no? Slight. yes. Peter Navarro. I'm putting sand in the gas tank, baby. All right. Vince Reinhardt, Peter Navarro, Bob McTeer, thank you very much. Very spirited discussion of the Fed.